So now I'm going to talk about how to actually the mechanics of doing the FRAP experiment. And there are a bunch of details of this which, you know, the point of the lab is for you to figure out on your own. But I'm going to talk about the actual manipulation of the equipment to get the data. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take one of your samples and you're going to put it uh, into, the, into the sample holder. Now I've actually put this sample in. I've only clipped it on one side so I can, you know, move it around easily. You don't have to clip it through both sides. And you want the cover slit facing the objective because the objective is not designed to reach through all that glass. So the cover slip side faces the objective. And then notice that I've got my lamp here is turned off and I've turned the laser on. So you'll see this green LED. And furthermore, the switches will eventually be up here, but I've actually opened the shutter so that the laser beam is coming out on the table and you'll, you'll be able to see it. If you put a card here, you'll, you can probably see the green spot even you know, scattering through the card. It's coming over here and you'll see it actually comes through the sample. So there's now light coming through the sample. And if you look here, you actually see I've already focused it. So there's a little bit of bright spot here. And in order to see that at all, I had to turn my gain and my shutter to maximum. Now, your samples will probably be brighter. This is an old sample. Uh, it's you know not, not very bright anymore. So I had to go all the way to maximum. But you may find that you saturate if you're close to maximum and that you actually have to back off some. So uh, you know I see something here with my gain and shutter set at maximum. I can click. You'll see that this updates my image. And all I've done is positioned the sample so that that white spot here is clear. So I'm focusing back and forth. You'll see it rapidly goes out of focus. You, you know, I'll come through focus. And little spots and junk you see in the image are just bubbles, and it's partly due to the fact that it's an old sample. When you're in best focus, so you'll actually see some diffraction rings in here, and that's, uh, that's one way to know that you focus the laser well on the sample in, in this particular experiment. Uh, so once you see this, you know you're well in focus. I'm going to close the shutter because I don't want to be bleaching any more than necessary. In fact, ideally what you want to do is put your sample in, you know, turn your shutter and gain settings up and do that relatively quickly and then close the shutter because the longer you have that beam on, the more you're going to bleach your sample. And you'll see that this is, you know, relatively gray still actually. It's not very black uh, in my image. That's because of all the ambient light in the room. So I'm going to take the top and I'm going to put that down over the, the box. And now, because we're going to want to use the laser later, you have to make sure there are a bunch of spring-loaded spring, spring -loaded, uh, uh, interlock switches on this box. And you want to make sure that when you put the box top down, it actually clicks on all of them. If sometimes it's a little offset far enough, won't catch one of them, and then that will keep the laser from functioning later. So look how much darker this is now. We've blocked the room ambient light. We've, it's practically black there. And when I open the shutter, right, the sample is much clearer. So at this point, the thing you want to do is start the, start the data acquisition program for the FRAP experiment. And that turns out to be the same program. So I'm going to open the shutter. And I'm going to click over here to get my shutter and gain settings proper and require another image. And now I'm going to right click. And notice how I'm not moving the mouse before I right click. Wherever the mouse was from your last uh, well, wherever the mouse is when you right click is the shutter and gain settings you're going to have going forward. So what I like to do is I'll do a normal left click to see that the shutter and gain settings are what I want and then I'll right click and that begins the next phase of the program and since that takes a little while I'm going to close the shutter again. So you notice the shutter's gone in the live image but I'm left here with the, the spot that I had before because I have not updated that image. And furthermore, in the command window, I now have a new set of instructions, and it's asking me for a file name to save my data as. And you want to make sure that you pick a legal file name. Don't put a lot of strange characters in here, because otherwise you'll do the whole experiment, and at the end it will, will crash because it can't handle a strange file name. So I'm just going to put my name, Bob Smith. Uh, I might put, uh, you know, 4PCT for a 4% sample. And... Uh, uh, you can choose whatever you want, but don't put the actual percent sign in. If you want to say percent, put PCT. And you can always rename this later. Pick something simple, you know what it is, you know which sample you're using. Hit enter. And now you've got new instructions. It's going to tell you that the left button picks the upper left point, and the right button picks the lower right point. And what that means, right, for a FRAP experiment, what we want to do is know the total intensity in this spot as a function of time. 
So we need to define the spot. And the way to do that is to pick an, to essentially bracket it by picking an upper left point here and a lower right point. And it, that will draw a square around this. And each data point is going to be the sum of all of the intensity of all the pixels in that square we've defined. And it will also come with a timestamp. So you need to do this in order. So I'm going to pick first to the uh, upper left with a left click, and then the lower right with a right click. And there are two things to notice. The first is I didn't draw that box much bigger than my sample, right? I, the, the, I drew it fairly tightly around the illuminated area. And the reason for that is that the more background I include, right, that provides me only noise, no actual data. So there's no point drawing a really big box around things. I want to draw the box fairly tight around my illuminated area. A circle would be best. It's a little bit more complicated to implement in software, so we're using a square. The second thing that's happened is that we have a new preview window here, which is just a, a feature of MATLAB. And I'm just going to drag this over the old one, because this window is now the active one. There also are now new instructions which have come up in the uh, command window over here. It now tells me that the left button will get a new frame and the right mouse button will end data acquisition. So what we can do here, we can no longer matters where we move in this frame. If I click, I'll acquire a data point. And right now there's the shutters closed, so the data point has, has nothing in it. But I'll see that I've now got an intensity and a timestamp. And in, in this case, the intensity is uh, 508,000 uh, counts, and the time is zero. The first sample will be zero. And so that gives, it's helpful to do a black uh, image first with the laser off because it gives you a sense of what your actual background is. In this case, my background is about 500,000 counts. And if I now open the shutter, right, you can see the beam. I'll click. I'm going to close the shutter so I don't bleach any more than I need to. But I've now acquired this, and that turns out to be 993,000 counts. So my signal is, you know, 500,000 counts above background roughly. And this is a blown up area of, of what I was looking at. You can even see some of the diffraction rings. So it's nice to have several data points to sort of uh, illuminate uh, what, uh, to illuminate your FRAP data set. So remember the FRAP data set is going to look something like this. I'm going to want to take you know, a data point here, you know, a couple to define this initial before I do my bleach down to here. So what I'll do is I'm going to open the shutter. You can see the image. Click to close the shutter again so I don't do any more bleaching than necessary. You know, here I'm already come up to 100,000. You know, I'll leave you to answer the question of why the intensity might be higher now than it was a minute ago. Uh, but maybe I'll open the shutter, take another point, close the shutter again. You know, I can do this a couple of times to define some convenient sort of initial state. Uh, 